Good morning, everybody. Hey, welcome to Friday. It is October 20th. Hope y'all are doing well and you've had a great week as we close out. Yesterday was um, not a great day on Wall Street. Uh, a lot, a lot of red ink. But we'll talk about that and more when Dave joins us in here in just a few seconds. Hey, before we do, though, let's not forget that, you know, there are very few things in this world that we can take control of. But you can take control of your portfolio by controlling the amount of risk you have there. You need to know what that risk is. And then you need to know how much risk you should have based on your current circumstances. That's where I see the big disconnect in the world we live in today. You need to know what that number should be. Give us a call at 863-382-0037 to schedule your core retirement analysis. Hey, with that, we've got Dave coming up next. It's 841 here. We're at 19 before 9. Time to check in on Wall Street. What the Sam Hill are they doing to us today? Things are a little volatile, a little bit negative. Let's just say traders are crabby at the moment. Let's see if we can cheer somebody up. Philip Statler's on the line from Statler Financial Services in downtown Sebring. I don't have a whole heck of a lot of good news to talk about this morning. Do you, Philip? No, definitely not much in the way of good news. Yesterday was really a bad day. Um, they did not like what uh, Chairman Powell had to say at noon yesterday, and uh -huh. that kind of started the slippery slide down to the close, which was a, a, a bloodbath, to say the least. Yeah, let's just say it was crapola. It wasn't quite as bad as it was two days ago, but it was up there. 251 points down on the Dow, 36 and a half down on the Standard & Poor's, NASDAQ down 128 points. That's almost a full percentage point. And gosh golly, what a shock. The VIX is up over 21. <laughs> Who would have thunk that, right? That's a big jump, isn't it, from where it was the other day? Yeah, I think yesterday is one of those days in which I, uh, I, I say the only people who made any money were people who bought the VIX, right? Uh, yeah, or who were short in the market. Yeah, that too. Uh, yeah. The trigger for the whole mess as much as anything, other than the fact that we had a couple of not-too-pleasant reports that came out, uh, Tesla among them kind of sank some of the tech-oriented stock. They were down by like 10%. But uh, Chairman Powell started talking to reporters, and really, I want to put a gag in his mouth. Uh, number one, the next Federal Reserve meeting begins on, oh, lucky us, Halloween, and we get the report the day after on November 1st. But uh, he was sending some pretty strong codes saying, we've got to choke down the economy a little bit more. Inflation's still too high. And it kind of signaled that, well, there isn't going to be an interest rate increase in December, but he kind of made it a slam dunk for the one that starts in about 10 days, didn't he? Yeah, he did. You know, to say lower economic growth is likely needed to bring down inflation. Um yeah, you know, and they are, res I just like some of these quotes in this uh, article, is that they are res resolute to a 2% inflation mandate. So um, they are sticking to their guns and uh, we're going to have to feel the pain before things change. The beatings will continue until morale improves, right? That's right. I definitely start to feel that way. Kind of to get there. What I got a kick out of was the, the almost certain uh, signal that he sent that this will be the last one for the year. So I suppose that has some element of good news. But the markets were unhappy, and uh, it's not helping the bond markets either. Yesterday afternoon, the ten-year federal reserve, uh, federal bond peaked up over five percent, and that's the first time in sixteen years that's happened. And uh, Boy, you want to make some money. Federal bonds right now, virtually all of them are carrying within a gnat's breath of being 5% yield right now. Yeah, they, they are. It's um, un, uncanny as to what the interest rates are right now. And, and that's driving everything else, right? The auto loans are based on this. The mortgages are based on this. So everything is uh, credit card rates are based on this. So you know um, folks that are carrying – uh, high balances on their credit cards are getting creamed right now. Uh, yeah, and the other thing you and I keep mentioning is as federal debt rolls over, as bonds mature and renew, they renew at those kind of rates, which means our service on the federal debt is going to get to be a higher and higher percentage of the federal budget, which means 
it almost doesn't matter what the House does because we aren't going to have any money left to spend anyway, right? That's right. I mean, that just means that folks need to realize that those higher interest rates and and the bonds that are associated with them and the, and the government having to pay that interest rate means that you and I ultimately are going to pay that bill. And that means our taxes are going to have to go up just to uh, just to maintain uh, the, yeah, the interest rates we're paying. Yeah, we're rapidly approaching the point where basically, uh, you know, th there isn't going to be a choice whether you're a tax hawk or a tax dove. Uh, as we roll things over, the interest service on the federal debt will be trending toward double what we had just a couple, three years ago. And uh, I mean, I'm sorry, you got to pay your bills one way or the other. Full faith and credit is something that no matter where you are in Congress, you're going to figure out how to get it paid. And there's only so much you can cut back in order to make it work, especially while we've got uh, two hot spots in the world that the president probably rightfully wants to drop a few more billion dollars into in order to help Israel and help Ukraine. Uh, where else are we going to get the money? Oh, yeah, Philip and Dave's pockets. Yeah, exactly. Hey, and let's not forget, I mean, I know that we've been in this low tax environment for a long time, but let's not forget that we have had tax rates as high as 94%. So, yeah. folks, it now, can that, happen, that is, that is, and it that, will. That is true, but at the same time, i got to throw out the codicil to that, the fact that when we did have 94% top-end tax rates, we had a ton more deductions available as well. I saw some stats a while ago after the uh, after the cutback that we had, and we're taking the upper income brackets that actually were getting that 94 because there are fewer deductions. Many of those folks are actually paying more in taxes and a heavier percentage of the load than we were before, but your point's well taken. I mean, the actual rate itself uh, has been one heck of a lot higher than it is today, right? That's right. Well, even if you go to the average rate, Dave, I know that's not our topic for today, but but the average rate for the for the you and I people, twenty mm percent. -hmm. You know, yep. that's that's the low end, and that's where we could see everybody's rate at really shortly. Absolutely. We've got to get the money from somewhere. And the fact of the matter is, when we got 80 percent of the tax load being carried by the upper incomes, there's a limit at how much how much more blood you can get out of a turnip eventually. Like you said, that's not our primary effort today. We're looking at what's happening on Wall Street. And uh, yesterday, like I said, we had stocks basically going in the direction they were expected to go. Tesla ended up tanking. AT&T went up by 7 percent. Netflix went up by like 16% yesterday after they kicked butt on their report, but they were the outliers because everything else is basically sold like chiclets. Do we have any good news to come out with out of the reports this morning? Well, you know, American Express had a pretty good quarter. Um, they uh, they beat by about six cents a share, came in at $3.30. Uh, revenue was just slightly above expectations, which is better than the opposite. Um, they are trading up. A tenth of a percent this morning, and and let's realize that the indexes are all solid red today, um, and so to just be in the green and not being affected, that's uh, that's some good news for them. Uh, there's some other banks though that didn't have such a, a great quarter. Uh, one of the regional banks, Regions Financial, uh, mm -hmm. regional Regions Bank, they uh, they missed. Uh, I'm going to say substantially, they came in at 49 cents a share versus 58 cents that was expected. And then they missed on revenue as well. Um, so they are getting hammered this morning, uh, down seven and a half percent before things start trading around today. Um, Ooh, I, yeah. I was reading a piece that the uh, regional banks in general are having a real rough road to hoe this earnings season. Their profit margins are not what they used to be. Yeah, and and that's uh, which is kind of interesting, right? Because the the spread between interest rates should have gotten a little bit better um, from what they were. But uh, the other companies, I got two other companies to talk about: uh, Schlumberg, which is an oil and gas uh, company. Uh, they uh, they they missed on revenue um, and just barely beat on earnings. They beat by a penny a share at seventy eight cents. So. Uh, they're not doing well this morning either, down uh, a little over 2.1%. And then the last one, we talked about transportation the other day with uh, uh, J.B. Hunt, uh, but we've got Knight Swift, another transportation company, and they had a, a pretty good quarter. 
they uh, they came in at 41 cents versus 36 cents expected. Uh, revenue beat uh, substantially as well. Um, revenue rose 6% year over year for them. So I, I think that's a good uh, indication as well. Uh, so they are uh, they're, they're trading up today. You'll like this one. This is probably the big winner today, Dave. Up 11 mm -hmm. and a third percent. Cool. And in a transportation company, that's good news because that's a harbinger of other segments. So I'll take both the industry doing better as well as that individual issue. Resetting the table, well, you might not want to call it a bloodbath yesterday, but they definitely got a wholesale deal on leeches at the very least. 45 minutes before we're heading into trading this morning, what are we looking at? Dave, like I indicated earlier, it is red ink. Uh, we've got the Dow down three-tenths of a percent, the S&P 500 down three-tenths, the NASDAQ 100 is down a little over four-tenths, the Russell 2000 is down almost a half a percent. Like you indicated earlier, the VIX getting a nice bump this morning, up 1.3%. On the other side, we've got silver taking a big jump this morning, up almost 1.2% to $23.30 an ounce. Gold's up a half a percent at $1,990 an ounce. And then crude oil is, um, man, it looks terrible. It's up 1.1%, $89.35 a barrel. Earlier this morning, I looked at it, it was at 90. So uh, not good, not a good sign there. A little panic bump in those futures after we were uh, shooting down rockets in the oil patch using our own ships doing it. That kind of gave everybody a start, I'd wager, didn't it? Uh, I think so. I think so. But at least they're trying to protect our interests. Uh, yeah. Overseas markets, Asia is looking at us and going, oh, God, here we go again. The indexes there almost universally are down at the close this morning at 6 a.m. Europe, more of the same. Some of the markets are down precipitously. Germany's down by almost a percent and a half halfway through. The overall index in Europe as a whole down almost a full percent halfway through their trading day. Big do tomorrow. You and I are spending some time together downtown Sebring with Shred Day, aren't we? We are. We're going to have the Shred Truck in town. And uh, we will be positioned at the corner of Center and Mango uh, across the street from the First Baptist Church. It's their grass parking lot over there. Um, so we'll be there from 10 to 2 tomorrow. We'll have some hot dogs and bottles of water and and uh, just uh, so the um, seniors versus crime will be there. Talk about uh, have some identity theft information there and uh, and get you some knowledge about their their uh, programs they have available and just a, a good time come on down 10 to 2 bring your shredding down and let's get stuff uh, shredded up for you and uh let's fill the truck up this year absolutely like we've been saying on the commercial all week i mean dumpster divers are still more common than those overseas hackers and we don't think about them as much because they aren't as glamorous that's tomorrow morning and don't forget the stat for the statler financial radio show three times this weekend six and noon on saturday and then again, 10 o'clock Sunday morning on News Talk 7.30 a.m. and 95.3 f.m. Philip, I'll see you tomorrow morning at 10. Let's cross our fingers. There's a turn upward in the markets today. Fair enough? Fair enough, buddy. Have a great day. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Thank you, my friend. It's 105.7 Light FM and Statler Financial Services. Philip Statler. We again, folks, I want to thank you for joining us. I hope you had a great week. Have a great weekend. Join us again Monday, same time, same place. Until then, have a great one.